So my name's Luke Chaplin. Uh, my study topic is livestock mustering with drones. I started off um, and going through the you know application of it was a bit more broad um, sort of drones in agriculture, but I saw there was quite a lot of opportunity um, to, to make a big difference um, on this topic. Um, and it's been a really big few years since I got the scholarship. Um, I've now started a company, we have over 200,000 head of livestock being mustered by drones, um, by customers who have become confident and capable through our technology, training and advice. Um, and I have a whole lot to thank um, Nuffield for, because um, you know back then I think they really saw the belief, maybe even possibly more than I did. Um, and from that, I think, you know, that belief and credibility um, attracted the support of Meat and Livestock Australia and the Queensland Department of Ag, um, who I continue to work with and I'm really grateful for. Um, but I say to Jody all the time, I think, like, getting the Nuffield really helped me, you know, get through the doors and, and that credibility. So that all started back in 2021, but... Maybe a little bit in 2020, because to talk um, about Daniel uh, being bad at interviewing, I take no responsibility for being in the Cloncurry Bakery for my national interview in 2020. Nicola called me up and said, the panel's ready to see you. I blame it on daylight savings. That's what happened. I promise you. Um, so... Yeah, surprise, surprise, I did not get a Nuffield scholarship that year. I had no tie on, no jacket, and tried to make a bit of a joke of it. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's what happened. But talking about Nuffield, I mentioned Jody. Thanks to Jody. Um, and also to James Walker and Sonia Kamiski, the legend, there she is, um, who pushed me to, to go for it again. Um, and PSP, uh, my sponsor. So um, the Hewitt Cattle Company, um, who falls under PSP, um, would be big advocates for me. Um, and a really cool full circle moment, what happened early this year, was Miriam Villain King, uh, we're GFP buddies, and she said, I think you need to come to Moree, and I think, I think we need to get the birds to scare the cockatoos off the orchards. So um, earlier in the year we did that, and Miri, after a successful trial, you know what you have to do? Buy a drone. <laughs> you need to buy a drone off me. <laughs> so that's where we're at. So, yep, um, I'm from Cloncurry in northwest Queensland. I also spend a little bit of time now in southeast Queensland. Um, I also have a little boutique film production company with my sister, who is one of my best mates, um, and we're doing a range of different projects. I found it really lovely that the whole Nuffield community embraces that. It's not just all about agriculture. I think everyone, I've really felt the support about, you know, following your passion and, and what you're interested in. I think those skills as well have sort of, there's been a bit of a crossover. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. So there's three certainties in life for graziers. Death, taxes, and mustering your livestock. So as a multi-generational grazier myself, I was faced with the problem that traditional methods are becoming expensive, uh, inefficient at times, and unsafe. Uh, and I was also really sick of hearing this. Luke, get off your horse. You can't handle it. Get on a bike. Those cattle across the river need to come in. Working with family, as you can imagine, can be quite difficult. So mustering um, is, and I believe, you know, will continue to be the key operational activity in the livestock sector. So aerial mustering as a solution has been extremely proven and effective since the 70s when skilled pilots returned from the Vietnam War. So we're looking at over 10 million head of livestock are mustered by choppers each year. Don't think that's going to go away anytime soon. But there are starting to be some issues. We're looking at probably $600 hourly fees probably this year. Um, um, the operational flexibility, I guess, is limited. And between 2008 and 2017, 15 people died um, helicopter mustering in Australia. So what's the next evolution of livestock mustering? Yes, you guessed it. Flying robots with GPS tracking, high-resolution cameras, thermal imaging, noise disruption technology, all bundled in to a user-friendly portable device ready to deploy 
at any time. But the big question is, and this is why I wanted to do enough field scholarship, does it work? Do drones chasing livestock, does that work? So this was a core part of the research. And I must say, I am not the first person in Australia or in the world to chase livestock with drones. But what we did, and, and what I believe I did, was scope up quite a sophisticated, world-leading um, trials um, where we conducted over 20 musters on a range of diverse terrain with sheep, cattle and goats. And the key research question was, what was possible at that time, 2022, under current um, and, and the latest consumer technology under current regulations. Um, and this is a quick little video of the trials. It was amazing, absolutely blew me away. So we were really happy, really happy with that one. I see a little cow down there. It's cool because I like it flying around and because it's got the cool camera. <laughs> Is that nomadic free? It's really good having videos, you don't have to talk for as much, so that was a bit strategic. So what did we find out? Um, huge cost savings. So we had an independent economist um, calculate that uh, replacing a helicopter with a drone in a northern beef enterprise has the potential to yield a 251% return on investment in a year. Uh, drones can see in the dark, so the efficiencies and benefits, productivity benefits of moving your livestock um, in the early hours of the morning are really great. Uh, they're better for the environment and safety um, uh, compared to traditional methods and has the potential, combined with good stockmanship practice, um, to be great for animal welfare. So uh, Regan can probably, you know, correct me here, but, um, you know, when an animal is stressed, they'll release um, excess cortisol levels. There we go, I'm getting a nod. Um, and I think, you know, when we think of a drone, a drone is just another form of pressure, just like a motorbike, just like a helicopter, just like a horse. It's how we apply that pressure into an animal's flight zone and how we're able to release that pressure. When we give the animals a release, release of pressure, we're giving them a reward and we're also training them to be able to move off that pressure and we will keep them light and responsive to the drone. Um, I think I was going to say more there, but I forget. Um, so that is um, comes to my international travel. So I went through Asia to really see, you know, what the latest technology is out there. Um, took my lovely mother with me. She had a great time. And sorry about that bottom video uh, photo, but it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> Probably, probably one bit of advice I would say for the incoming um, scholars 
would be Trade Investment Queensland or your state equivalent. We're really open um, to just having me in, having a cup of coffee, giving me a really great idea of the market and the landscape over there, and they're obviously really well connected. Um, I think if your state equivalent's not as good, just pretend you've got a cousin in Queensland or whatever, and I can give you an intro, no worries, but I really, really encourage it. Um, I always love to go into supermarkets. Um, also, I don't know, Tim, just let me know if I'm going over because this didn't start, this clock, but you'll be right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, three minutes. Um, so I always love going into supermarkets and seeing Australian produce. So I did get a meeting with DJI. So DJI have like roughly 80% of the world market share in drones. Really great, good little consumer drones, but they're enterprise series with the thermal sensors, zoom technology, enabling software is really affordable. And I get asked a lot of questions about how long do the drones go for? And we do have limitations in the flight time. And I can, I can, get, I can get you a, a custom drone, multi-rotor, that'll probably fly for two hours, all good, but it's gonna be like between 50 and 100 grand. So what you get here, flying for 40 minutes, and it's just developing an operational plan, and you're getting that for under 10 grand. And I think that um, really suits, uh, you know, farmers on a budget. <laughs> Um, so that was so that was DJI, and um, I couldn't get to Shenzhen to actually have a physical meeting with them. And Trade Investment Queensland helped me with that. Really excited, but earlier last year, COVID was still an issue, so I didn't get through. So I had a Zoom, and I got proof. So Jody, I did meet with DJI. Um, that was South Korea. Um, I missed a flight because I didn't get a um, you know thing whatever. Um, this is a uh, robotic um, barista um, in South Korea. The coffee was actually terrible, so we won't worry about that. Trade investment in Queensland in Hong Kong. Um, there we were at a thing. I better keep going. So then I went to San Francisco, the home of innovation and big ideas, and probably more relating to the creative sector there. A musician told me on the street that you go to LA and New York to be, well, that was terrible, to be, uh, to become somebody, and you come to San Francisco to be yourself. So that was really cool. Um, and um, I, I did a bit of a trip around to all the tech giants. Um, the co-working spaces there are, are really cool, um, and some things I learned there, they're real collaboration. I think, you know, we've got some cool working spaces and whatnot in Australia, so they're doing that. The culture over there, high risk takers, and I think entrepreneurs are naturally like that, but they build fast, they test, and I think failure over there is almost celebrated because from failure you can learn lessons and there's no point building something, spending a bunch of money when the market doesn't exist. Um, on the right is the actual office of Harvey Milk um, and we were talking about advocacy earlier today um, and I think some lessons could be learned there. So that, that bloke paid the ultimate sacrifice but um, his legacy will, will live forever so I think that's pretty cool. So here I am in a ride share and I got into just a bit of an argument with, with the driver, so. So how's your day going? Excuse me, I just said, how, how's your day doing, driver? How rude. music there but that's the Google Waymo so it was only really um, uh, probably about a month before I was there consumers were able to ride in it uh, what was really interesting about that you know if you can see it you can be it and Sky Kelpie does have some um, things in the pipeline we can't really announce yet um, around autonomy and so the you know the LiDAR vision systems and the algorithms that Google have got um, in the Waymo uh, were quite interesting to me. Um, but Tesla's technology is probably a little bit better than that again. And what's interesting is uh, when Tesla finally have their driverless cars, you'll get dropped off at work and then the Tesla will actually go and be a ride share and earn you money while you're at work. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't get a meeting with Elon Musk, no. So then I got on the road, uh, visited some um, producers, obviously California, I think produces about $50 billion that the ag sector is worth, and Jody hooked me up with some really cool producers. I'll just keep going a bit because I'll run out of time. Um, and then I got to Vegas, so Max, I think Max has already left, but I also went to a conference in Vegas. 
And Jody told me to say that I should mention I did go to Luke Bryan and Lady Gaga, two very different artists, uh, while I was there. But this is one of the bigger uh, uh, drone conferences in the world. Um, I can speak more about regulations in Australia. They are a barrier, but um, you know, Australia actually does have some of the more progressive uh, drone regulations in the world due to our low um, ground and air risk in, in remote Australia, but there is some more work to be done. Um, that's me at the conference still. That drone there is pretty cool. So that's a fixed wing drone, bottom right. Um, it's a powered, it, it's a hybrid power source. So the solar panels will actually charge the battery as it's flying and as you get to sunset, the battery will be charged enough to fly the whole way through the night. So it can stay up there 24 hours. Um, this is the GFP legends, hello. Um, here we are doing our thing. So that's Tessa, the very professional Nuffield employee, giving me the finger. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, that's, a, that's a robotic autonomous milker. And so I was set to go at the end of our GFP to Israel to look at the technology there and the landscape. And unfortunately, about four days before I went, the October um, 7 events happened. So I did go to my good friend, UK scholar Claire Whittle. Um, she's a legend. She's a vet. Uh, she loves regen. Um, you probably met her, Claire. Um, and she loves dung beetles. So I went and stayed with her in Wales. Um, so she's, she's awesome. So yeah, just a quick bit, you know, we're already implementing our recommendations from the research, um, doing an online course, um, um, helping people get licensed. And a cool little thing we're doing is the Sky Kelpie Simulator, a virtual training playground where you can become an expert in drone mustering and aerial stockmanship. Um, big opportunities here. We love it. It's creative. I'm probably out of time. But... Um, this could be multi-purposed um, and we're really excited. So we continue to work with MLA, the Queensland Government. Um, and I just want to say Nuffield really was the launching pad for what I'm doing at the moment. Um, can't thank you enough and thanks for... Oh yeah, actually one last thing, should I do it? So I was just going to get everyone quickly to stand up. Everyone stand up. We're almost there, almost beer time, it's all good. We're just going to count to three. One, two, three. Okay, we'll now sit down. Well done. And so I did actually just want to finish on a bit of a serious note. So the time that it took for all of us to do that, you could have bought a drone off my website. So thank you very much. <laughs>